Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro CC tutorial, I'm going to show you five stylish transition effects that you can create for your vlogs, videos, and projects, including fades, flashes, and glitch transitions. So before we begin this tutorial, I just want to say if you're not following me on Instagram, Twitter, social media, go follow me. A lot of you guys always want to message me examples and links, and it's a lot easier for you to just DM me on Instagram or Twitter, I can get back to you easier. And I love sharing, live streaming, whatever on there. So the links for all that will be in the description. I look forward to connecting with you guys more on there. And getting into this tutorial, I've got a sequence of example clips laid out on this timeline with just a simple cut in between them. So we're gonna be building all these transitions right within Premiere. So let's ease into it with a pretty simple but transition that you might wanna use in the beginning or end of a project is the crop open or close barn door transition. So let's head over to the effects panel on the right hand side. I'm going to be in this menu a lot. So if you don't see it, then I'm just working on the default all panels and window workspace reset default workspace. So that's how I have everything on the side here. But let's open up the video transitions and under the wipe folder, you should see one called barn doors. These transition effects, which you can see have a diamond symbol here are able to be dragged right in between clips or at the start or end of clips. So if I place it at the start of this clip and click on that transition, you should see in the effects control panel a few different options. Basically, you can just choose what direction you want it to open up from, south to north or east to west. So if I click this down arrow, then it'll open up up and down like I want, and you can reverse it if it's not opening up the way you want. Now by default, it's one second long, but if you want a little bit more of a slower cinematic feel, you can stretch out that transition so it takes a couple more seconds, and then you have a slow crop open effect. Alternatively, you can drag the barn doors on the end of a clip, and you'll have a slow crop close effect if you want to end out a project that way. So that's an easy functional transition for your beginnings and ends if you want it. However, next let's talk about creating flash transitions. So if I want to flash from this clip to the next, there's a couple different ways that we can do this. So one, a really easy way is just search for the dip to white effect, which you should find that also in the video transitions under the dissolve folder. And if you click and drag it in between two clips, you can click on that transition, adjust the alignment of it. So center at cut is what I'm going to do. And by default, it's one second, which is a little too slow. It's more of a white fade. But if you want to turn that into a flash, I like to just cut the length of this down to be barely even half a second. So when we play that back, you can see it's a lot more like a flash and a bump, which you could sync to different pieces of music. Alternatively, there's a ton of stock footages that you can find online, like film reels and light leaks that you can place over top of tracks and just cut them down to be a few seconds long. So in this example, I like this couple of frames in this stock film reel footage I found, and I'll just cut the clip down to size for that exact portion and place it directly on top of the in-between cut of those two clips. Now also in this case, this stock footage is a little bit smaller than my sequence size, but I'm not really too concerned about the detail or fuzziness of it, so I'll just increase the size and scale of it until it fills up the sequence. From here, we can actually go a couple different directions with it. You could just let it play in between the clip and it's kind of like a deflective transition. It catches your eye for a second, flashes and goes to the next clip. Or you can apply a blending mode onto this. So I could use a blending mode like screen or color dodge, which will just kind of amplify the brightness of the clips, but you'll still be able to see what's underneath. And that's just another variation of how you could let this flash play through. And you can even see in this case, I'm combining it with that dip to white flash. But the creative and color possibilities are endless depending on the different stock footages and colors you choose. So the next transition I'm going to show you guys is how to do an easy Luma style or brightness map fade. So I have this clip laid on top of the other track. So rather than having the cuts right next to each other, you want to create some overlap between the clips. And this overlap is going to be the duration of the transition, so keep that in mind as well. Now for this one, we're going to go into the effects control panel and search for one called gradient wipe. That should also be in the video effects transition folder. I'll click and drag this onto this clip directly, and now we can just set a few keyframes to make the transition happen. So in the effects control panel, we can adjust the transition completeness. You have zero, 
to 100%. You can also adjust the softness of the transition so it'll create a little bit of feathering so it's not as harsh between the light and dark. Now all you have to do is go to the beginning of the clip, set the transition to be 100% complete because we want to hide the image that's coming in, and then we'll go to the end of that overlap and set the transition completeness to zero, which means it will reveal the video clip. So now when we press play, you should see a luma fade style of transition. Alternatively, you can invert it so that it starts showing the darks before the lights, but that's case by case on what's gonna look good. So in this case, I like it as normal. Now, if you wanted to luma fade it out from this clip to the next clip, what you would do is just create a keyframe at zero and then create the last keyframe at 100. So kind of flip it. But in this case, I'm gonna show you how to do a strobe flickering transition away without manually cutting the clips. So this time, let's search for an effect called strobe and drag the strobe light onto that same clip that's on top of this next clip. Here, we're going to go into the strobe light and also create a couple keyframes. So I'll go to the start of the overlap and I'll click this keyframe for blend with original and I'll set it at 100%. So it's fully blended, in other words, it's not showing. Now let's go one frame over and turn the blend with original off down to zero. That means it's gonna start flickering. But we have to tell it how to flicker. So instead of half a second on, one second off, that's kind of slow, I'm gonna do 0.1 on for every 0.2 off. That'll mean it'll flicker a couple times every second. Then instead of making it flicker white, which you can pick the color here if you want, like you could pick a red and have it set to add or subtract or whatever, and that could be a cool effect if you wanted to do that, but I'm going to make the layer transparent. That means whatever's underneath is gonna show through. So that'll basically give us a flickering effect until the overlap ends and we're fully into the next clip. Now let's talk about how to create a glitch transition, which is actually very simple. This time, since we're using an effect between two clips, we're gonna have to use an adjustment layer. So click on the project media bin and go to file, new, adjustment layer. This will create a blank adjustment layer for us to drag on the project on a track that's on top of the clips. So now let's cut it down to size again. We only want it to be a couple frames on each side of the clip. And then we're going to add an effect onto this adjustment layer. So head over to the effects control panel and search for one called wave warp. You should find it in the distort video effects folder. Click and drag this on the adjustment layer. And now we just have to adjust some settings to make it do some crazy glitchy warps. So there's a ton of different wave types for you to play around with. I might actually make a full separate tutorial just on this glitch transition, but let's pick one like noise and let's increase the wave width and height considerably so you can really see some separation. Now to take care of some of those black edges which are appearing, I'm going to set the pinning to all edges, which is kind of gonna stretch those back down. And then I'll just play around with the adjustment here so that there's not so much black happening. From here, you could play around with the direction if you want it to be diagonal, and you can also set the wave speed. So what I'm gonna do is increase the speed of this wave so that it really starts messing up as soon as the adjustment layer hits. Now we can play that back, and you see as soon as it goes on the adjustment layer, it starts glitching and noising up, and it appears to glitch transition into the next clip. You could copy the same adjustment layer over, so I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and just copy drag it over to other portions. And if you wanna experiment with different wave types to see how those will look, you can get some pretty interesting looking glitch results in this simple way. That one's really fun, there's a lot of different possibilities. So again, I might make a full separate video on that. And coming here to the end of the clips, you see that same crop close that we did earlier. So those are five stylish video effects that you can create right within Premiere. If you guys enjoyed this video, then make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all of my future videos. And if you're looking for more zoom transitions, slide transitions, all that, I have tons of more transition tutorials on the playlist on my channel, so check those out. If you like this video, definitely leave a like on it, let me know what you thought in the comments, and feel free to reach out to me on social media. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.